Okay, good morning, folks, and thank you to everyone who's joined us here for Sustainable Newton's continuing series of webinars with uh, virtual conversations, panel discussions, uh, interesting topics that, that we hope you enjoy as part of our in continuing the conversation in our community around climate, climate change, climate action. We're um, very happy to be joined this morning by a friend from the a friend from up north from here, but uh, I first um, learned about Erica Gilsdorf and the work she was doing with What Fuels You an Electric Road Trip through the Climate Reality Blog. And there was an interesting story about Erica and two folks that she had met uh, through activism in her community and had started a very interesting project uh, that, um, that I shared with our Sustainable Newton audience and, and you know, some of the videos that Erica was creating as a, as a filmmaker, very interested in climate action. And um, along the way, Erica, you know, contacted me to thank us for sharing her work. And, and we, we struck up a conversation and found we had a lot in common in terms of a passion for finding positive stories about uh, the climate, about the world and the things that we're, we're all trying to achieve. So Erica, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah. At, least, at least now, still from Minnesota, that's going to change soon. And we'll tell folks about that. But, just to get started, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about how you got, um, how you first came to start up the, um, the electric road trip series. Yeah, thanks. And this is fun to be here. You know, we're on Zoom, so we're used to waving now on, mm -hmm. on our cameras. Yeah. So thank you. I, I um, yes. Um, Maurice, you were the one who inspired this next trip, and so we'll get into that, but uh, it's your support that was like, you're like, you can do this. So it was a long time ago, and I thank you for that. And now here I'm leaving in about three weeks. So how this started was I've always been um, a big um, activist with environment and especially concerned with climate change. And we did some series over, I did some filming over in um, Ireland, and we did a lot of on climate action. Then I came back to the U.S. Um, I work here in Detroit Lakes. And I was told to go on a shoot at a local um, event for an EV display. And I got really excited about it. I, I, I thought EVs, electric vehicles, were out of my price range and out of my ability to have. But I learned a lot. And I also learned how the infrastructure needs to improve. And we need to get electric vehicles into rural communities. And so that it can be something that even uh, myself in a rural area could have an EV or plug-in hybrid vehicle. So I met with the two people that had hosted the event, um, Polly and Mark Anderson, and we struck a conversation and we started the What Fuels the Electric Road Trip. And we started the first one was last year, uh, last fall, we just did a pilot in Minnesota and traveled all around um, uh, Minnesota and told great stories and had wonderful sponsors. And, and then, um, I just, I just love it. And I, I'm doing it again now this year, but doing it for a whole year. Oh, yes. So, um, I enjoyed a lot of the stories that we would love to share some now with the folks, but I, I tried earlier, we had a little problem with the audio, but at the end of this uh, session, we will have a link up that folks will receive to go to, um, uh, Erica's various social media pages, but also to her YouTube channel. So, you know, I encourage folks to check those out, but maybe what are a couple stories, Erica, that, that stand out for you as, 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 as segments you were, you know, enjoying? Yeah, yeah. What I love about this series is we're out to, or I'm out to this time just by myself, to find stories of good things happening. I, um, I think, at least for me, I get, I get bummed out with the state of the planet and what's happening, and it gets overwhelming, and then I get depressed, and I thought, you know what, I need to really focus on what is good happening, and there is a lot of good happening, and, and um, I learned this from a friend in Ireland that said, I'm doing what I can in my own backyard, and I'm trusting you're doing what you can do in your own backyard, which is why I love Sustainable Newton, because you even say that on your website, it's like, this is what we're doing right now, right here in our community, you know, with your pollinator, and with your solar programs and um, 
So what I love about this is that I focus on what people are doing within their own scope of influence. So one story that we were going to show this morning um, is like we filmed a brew a brewery in Duluth that has solar panels on their roof and then people can see how much electricity they're saving and generating, how much money they're saving. And it's just, it was just a fun, it's just a fun story. And they want to be a leader in, in making change. Um, another story is um, Peace Coffee down in the cities. They um, buy organic coffee because as climate change is affecting, you know, especially around the equator where coffee grows, um, it's impacting a lot of livelihoods. It's impacting coffee. And so by supporting climate change, you're supporting coffee and by buying fair trade and organic, we learned that you, if it's organic, it means it has a canopy and having a canopy means there's a rainforest there. Mm -hmm. And so by supporting organic coffee, you're supporting biodiversity and, and forests. And so it's like the connection that people can make. It's like, oh, by buying this organic coffee, I'm doing more than just organic it's actually helping the environment. So it's those kind of stories um, that I just love and that I'm looking forward to telling. It's interesting because, you know, there's a lot of, of there's a lot of focus right now. The, the film Kiss the Ground just came out focused on regenerative agriculture. The folks at Drawdown and now Drawdown Georgia are very focused on that. But you were, you were sharing stories of some of the farms there in your area, I think last year doing that. So. Oh. Yeah, that was that was one of our biggest focuses, which I just loved. I what I love about this is, I know it's probably not the way people should do it, but I try not to get completely familiar with something before I film it, so that so that I can answer questions that uh, that I don't lose sight of what I had questions before I started doing research. So regenerative ag that General Mills sponsored was a big focus of our story, along with electrification and transportation and renewable energy. But I did not know a lot about regenerative ag. I mean, I admit, I did not know what it was, what it meant. And after we interviewed um, Stony Creek Farm, it was so interesting to see what they're doing and how they've improved their land and how they've improved their crops and how they're becoming more profitable and how they're not having floods and droughts because their land is healthier. And then we talked to the soil scientist who explained how that works by like, no-till um, by keeping a cover crop. So it was just so interesting. And he, these are like with the series, we focus on people that's cha uh, that challenge the status quo, that do things, you know, they had, they had a hard time. You know, lots of people are like, why are you doing it that way? You know, you're, they got a lot of pushback. And now years later when their fields aren't flooded and when they're having good yields, it's like, oh, you know, they're not tilling. So the earthworms are helping to keep the soil healthy it's just so, it was so interesting. And it's just so heartwarming to meet people. And I feel inspired after telling these stories and hope for a future and hope that these stories will inspire other people to look into it or to get help to try and change how we do things so that we can do things better and learn from what we've done and not blame ourselves maybe because we didn't know, but rather to switch and be open to new ways of doing things like, like Stony Creek Farm is doing. Yeah, well, you did a great job of capturing those stories. I know they they inspired me, and um, it was always on a, on a tough day. It was good to pull one up and just watch it to kind of re-energize. But now, I mean, those were great, but now you're taking it to a whole different level. So maybe tell us a little bit about the adventure you're getting ready to embark on. Yeah, we just, um, we just, well, I say we, it's me, and I have some editors, and I hope to, um, be able to hire videographers along the way um, in each community. But um, I, we just got a sponsorship, presenting sponsorship from Mitsubishi, which is exciting. So I am in love with their, um, their um, Outlander plug-in hybrid vehicle. And, and so I'm going to be driving that. Um, and I'm going to be pulling a tiny house that I'm being, having made right now. So the tiny house is adorable, but it is extremely tiny. It's, I think, like 100 square feet. But um, that way I'm self-sufficient and I can, you know, it's even going to be able to handle in the winter. It's got a cute little fireplace from Cubic uh, mini stoves that they donated. Um, so um, I'm trapped. Um, 
I'll just be traveling by myself, hitting lots of national wildlife refuges because I want to focus on those. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Let's I'm going to bring up a few of the pictures you shared. Yeah. So what uh, that is is that's a tent that Aaron Coleman with Coleman Cabinets is a friend of mine out in Kansas who is an architect builder and loves tiny houses. So I'm so glad that um, the family friend that I get to work with him. So he built this um, tent to build my tiny house in. So that's on my trailer, which is from Aluma Trailers. They donated that and it's adorable because it, you know, the pictures have like a lawnmower or a golf cart on it. And now I have a tiny <laughs> house. <laughs> so that, and those are my benches and he's built it over the wheels so that I have some more space. But that's what I'm pulling down the road. And the thing with the um, Outlander the Mitsubishi Outlander is um, the toy, they have a towing capacity, whereas a lot of EVs don't, or they're, they're beyond, way beyond my price range. So this one has a 1500 total pulling weight, um, which means um, everything, meaning the, the trailer, the tiny house, everything in it. And so we had to keep it really light. And so we had to order some expensive, um, plywood that we got a little discount from Chesapeake Lumber in Maryland and then like Total Boat has been great and donated a lot of the epoxy and fiberglass um, because we have to it's it's like a um, houseboat I guess and that's my cute little great nephew that went to pick up my trailer in Kansas. <laughs> I'm guessing that, that the, this might be the first tiny house the trailer people have had built on. One yes of I think it is and it's so funny because it looks, the trailer just looks so small. Like I said, the pictures with like a four wheeler on it looks like that fills up the trailer. And now it's like, okay, I'm going to be living on that trailer for a year. So, Are you sure? and that's the total boat donated all this items, which I'm grateful for to make this. And that's on my trailer from Aluma Trailers. And I've enjoyed some of your posts about the uh, downsizing process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a storage unit and they're like, my family's like, just get rid of that. And like, did you see my fire baton and Barry Manilow collection? Yes, that, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was Miss Arizona, Miss Phoenix and Miss Tucson and Miss Fiesta Bowl and baton twirling. I, you know, I'm kind of a big deal, Maurice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Had something to add to the to the show yeah. along the way. Yeah, yeah, I could I could throw my batons, but um, so that's and I think you have some yeah. more pictures. Yeah, I think maybe I maybe I went through them all because I can't. Oh, there we go. There we go. So that's just the building process. Um, like you can see, to keep it light, it's a lot of epoxy and fiberglass. Um, so that's that's upside down right now. And so he you can see where the wheels would go. And then he I didn't send you the pictures, he had to flip it over. <laughs> um so and then I wonder if you have that last picture. It looks kind of like um so now it's flipped over and it's on officially on the trailer. Here's my cute little Aaron building away. And um I don't know if you have any more. No, no we're back there. Yeah. So t when, when do you leave, actually? Okay, so I am leaving. Um, I was going to leave October 26th, but my uh, Outlander comes at the end of the month. Um, it's being um, delivered from California after it was in a road race, which is exciting. And I want to share about that story later. Um, but, and then I'm getting some decals put on it, and then I'm driving it back up to Minnesota, I mean to Detroit Lakes. So probably around the first part of November, which is really awkward now with the election, but I have so many places to visit on the schedule that I can't push it back any further. So I'll just have to leave and see what the world looks like post election and, and at election. So what's your first stop? So my okay. first stop is Helena, Montana. And, um, my first stop there is I have a friend there, which will be good just to kind of get my legs underneath me. But also there's some great stories there. Um, one, which just shows that I want all kinds of stories, not just big projects, but like um, one of their roommates 
took in a, a lot next to them that was just a bare lot and made it now it's a full on vegetable garden. And I just love how people can take space and make, make it something that's good. Whether like with you guys with butter, like one of your um, members did the butterfly, turn the yarn into bu butterfly for monarchs. They have this huge garden now and I just love that. So that, and she also works with Audubon Society. And then another person works with another story I'm going to do is on pesticides and herbicides and, He's a musician and wrote a song and I just kind of interested in seeing what his song is and um, then I go up to Idaho and then I go across to Washington and down the coast of California um, then I drop down um, and go to Nevada not drop down but go across to Nevada then I'll be in Arizona um, I love the desert I grew up in Arizona so I'm excited about desert stories too and and a lot of challenges the desert's facing and then um, because I'm a Minnesota girl and I love snow and I'm going to be missing my Minnesota yeah. in the winter, which is weird. Most people don't like right. snow. <laughs> I love it and I know the value. And so I want to do a big story on protect our winter and the value of both just for habitat, but also for recreation skiing and conditions that we need and, and health of our seasons that we need to rely on this for, for everything. We need our season still. So I'm going to spend some time January and part of February in Colorado area to do stories on winter. And then I head down to you guys. Yes. yes. Yeah. So then I'll be heading After down the there. <laughs> After What's the that? snow. After yeah. all the snow. <laughs> After the snow, I'll be heading down there, um, following the coast down Florida and then coming up through Georgia and, um, uh, I mean, coming down to your whole Southeast area next spring and then going back up to the Midwest next um, June, July, and August, and then finishing up on the Northeast next fall. So one of the things you and I talked about was, you know, ideas for stories, things to, for you to see when you're in our community, um, just to give our, our, our followers some idea of the things that you're trying to focus on. So maybe they can, through us, give us some, you know, I've given you my thoughts, but I'm sure other people know stories that they'd love to have you tell. So what are yeah. the areas that you're focused on? Yeah, I would love that. And the, when you look at the end of the examples, the last series, the pilot, we learned that that's why it's a pilot. You know, you try and learn what you can. That, um, the story, so a lot of times when you go into an area of the media, we like to have media because we want to draw attention to like the organizations we're focusing on because it, it only helps you guys and to get volunteers or to know what you're doing. So all of this focuses on who we're visiting and how we can help them and how we can be a branch of their outreach and messaging. And so what we, what I like to do is send a press release in advance and say, hey, I'm going to be in this area and I'm, I'm, I'm like going to be talking with Sustainable Newton. And what we did last time was we did these stories and then we came back after the road trip and edited them and distributed them. But then the kind of the hype is a little gone because we're not on the road anymore and the media um, wants a story obviously then. So now our stories are gonna be much simpler and quicker, um, shorter, simpler and quicker. So we can tell more stories and it also appeals more to social media. You know, I think everybody knows and we also found out that you know, people have, people want, they're busy, they want shorter videos to tune into. And then they'll tune in because they can trust like, oh, this is just a short thing. And I love, like you said, I can just get a quick hit of something positive, but I don't have to commit five minutes to it, which sounds like nothing, but you know, we're all busy. I'm the same way. Yeah. So we can do more stories and just short little nuggets. And I'm, I want to focus on what is good happening instead of like, instead of like, 90% of this is gone. I want to focus because I don't know what to do about that. Right. I want to focus on the 10% that sustainable Newton is working to bring back. And I can like get behind like, okay, we've got this to work with. Let's improve versus I don't want to, you know, so I really want to focus on what changes are happening and what, what good is happening. Obviously not sugarcoat over the bad, right, but right. just not focus on, on all that, we can't do anything about, but what we can do something about. You mentioned, I know for your original series, you were successful getting sponsors and you've picked some up for this. How, what's the reaction you get when you talk to companies about what you're trying to do and, and how do they see this in their, in their mission? 
Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely challenging right now um, with COVID. I mean, businesses are hurting and things are hurting. So it's definitely, you know, a lot of things aren't open and uncertain and election time and all this stuff. But like I said, we I've had great, I'm very gracious for total boat and Aluma trailers and cubic mini stoves and, and especially Mitsubishi that just came in as one of the presenting sponsors. Um, and so now we'll start reaching out to more sponsors. Um, you know, these are the ones I'm really grateful for because they sponsored something with just a, a hope, you know, like I don't have anything to show for it yet, really. I'm just, you know, that we can see the pilot, but this hasn't happened yet. And those are the sponsors that really go out on a limb. And so now hopefully more people will start getting on board, seeing that we already have these great sponsors, but also starting to see some content and what we're doing and, and how this can help their community to broaden awareness, like of what you're doing in, in um, your area. You know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people, I, I, I have friends with electric vehicles and, and, you know, they love them, but you know, a lot of people, myself included, who ultimately got a hybrid were just a little uneasy about the range. And yet you're, you're going across the country pulling a house. How how hard has it been to sort of map out a route that gets you the, the places you need to recharge along the way? Well, yeah, well, that will be the next step. And one of the things is we did our pilot in a 100% electric vehicle. And that was interesting because we had to, um, you know, you have to map, you have to stay in the corridor. And, you know, like they have a main charging. Now, now charging stations are popping up everywhere faster and faster. So it's getting easier and easier. Um, so with this one, this is a plug-in hybrid. And I had to go with a plug-in hybrid because I'm going to be going to a lot of areas that I, I can't get to. And so um, I, I look at this as a bridge for a lot of people. We have to do that right now. The infrastructure isn't completely there yet for us to travel everywhere. Um, and so this is a way for me to travel in an affordable way um, that allows me to get to where I get, but still be able to charge and go on 100% electric if I want to, if I can with short commutes, but then also um, be able to go to areas like some of these refuges where I, I could get, I, I, there, isn't a, uh, a, there isn't a way to get there with a charging 100% yet, but it's coming, so. Yes. I mean, I'm thinking out loud. I'm saying this as a note for myself, but when you come here, uh, one of the groups that, that we've been following real closely and, and using as a resource is Clean Cities, Georgia. And uh, it's, 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 they originally were focused almost exclusively on the electric vehicle segment, but now they're focused on you know, clean energy and all the other you know, wind and solar. But the, it's really encouraging because one of the driving forces is one of our Public Service Commissioners, who uh, is a very strong advocate for um, alternative energy and alternative fuel. So uh, they do regular webinars with their members around the state, communities, and what are they doing, and businesses, and what are they doing. So I know they'll want to roll out the red carpet when you get here and, and do a feature. So we'll have to make sure and, and hook up with them before, before next spring. So. Yeah, I really want to do, I really want to work with Clean Cities. I was contacted by um, a Clean Cities group in Colorado, and I really want to um, add that to my circuit, like refuges and clean, um, clean cities, because it all works together. And that's what this series is trying to show, like our natural places have to work with our cities. We all have to work together. And I love talking to leaders and people that dedicate time and energy um, either volunteering or in their sp scope of influence with work or a position that move this because it sometimes it's very I think you know this most people know it's ungratifying depressing you feel like you're banging your head against the wall but it's this it's constantly moving the needle that all of a sudden collectively some change starts happening and that's those are the people I admire and those are the people I want to tell stories about. So going back to when you started this um, and the time you spent out on the road finding stories, what, what have you learned or what has surprised you that you found when you went out into the world with these questions? Yeah, I've found out that people are, have perseverance. I mean, people, 
if you have a passion for something, it matters and people persevere beyond um, maybe ridicule from others, give, being given a hard time. It's like we all have to trust our heart and our instincts. And it takes, it takes, it takes a hard time sometimes to trust what you want for your future and to go for that and not just give up and say, what's the point? And those, that's what I've been really inspired with. And I'm so excited about, because when you're surrounded by people that are like, yes, I know this is bad, but we can do something. And I'm going to plant these baby trees because we need to bring back ancient forests. I'm like, oh my gosh. And they're staying with little kids. And yes, they're not going to, you know, that tree's not going to grow for 25 more years, but you know, it's just, it's a perseverance and, and dedication that really has inspired me. Yeah. So if uh, our, our, our folks, our followers, um, how do they follow along? How do we, how do we, where do we find updates along the way? Yeah. So we have a number of ways. Um, and um, so we have what few it's, it's hashtag, which, I'm learning all that stuff too. You know, I've never been a, a big, I've just, I've just struggled with that. And now I just, I love it because it's like, okay, I'm like connecting with you and lots of people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hashtag what fuels you USA. And then it's the at, you know, we're at what fuels you USA on, on Facebook, on Instagram, and then on our website, which is what fuels you USA.com. We have, um, we have just some information, but we also, I'm starting a blog and then we'll have, when we start a story mapping so people can follow along. And that's where, so how we're kind of doing this is Facebook will have just kind of little nuggets. Instagram story will have more continual stories so that we're not bombarding people. They can choose to watch or not, but we're not like in their face. So that's more fun stories as we go multiple times during the day, probably. And then the story mapping will be a place where we can tell more in-depth stories a little bit um, and the blog. So like when we go to Sustainable Newton, um, we can give a little more meat in there or we can direct people to links. And so we're all kind of driving people to the website so that they can learn more and get links to go um, to the places we're talking about or learn more. So that's the main thing. All right. Well, we, when we're when we're done for the folks in the Zoom, there'll be a page come up that that includes links to some of those things, and and um, not all of them, which I'll add. And then uh, the folks that register or attended will get a follow up email with that information as well. And for those of you that are watching on Facebook Live, I'll uh, I'll post the link to all of this information on our page so that you you have the links to track of Erica on her adventure, and then. Uh, in addition to that, um, I'll be following. I know we'll all be following, and so we'll make sure and share some of the fun stories along the way. As, as you head out, looking at, is there one particular story or one particular place you're really excited about about going? Well, I am. Ex I can't. You know, you asked me that before, which was good. And I thought about that, and I'm like, I'm really excited about all of them. And I and that sounds dramatic, but I've chosen my map because. I want to see the plains and I want to see the ocean and I want to see the mountains and, and areas that are maybe more obscure that don't get a lot of attention. Um, you know, where nesting birds are, you know, protected, not that we can go in there, but just to find out so that people can understand more about the smaller, the smaller, not commercialized areas that are so important. And, um, and I'm excited to visit you guys next spring. Yes. And I, I do have to say before I forget that when I first started this and I was, and we did the pilot and you reached out and then we talked this spring, early this spring, you're like, you can do this. You can do this. I'll help. We'll do this together. And I, it gave me the little, like, okay, there's somebody out there that says you can do this. And then I'm like, let's just do it. So Maurice, you are the, uh, first person that really supported the year-long road trip and I'm grateful for that. Oh it's really I mean it's amazing just to, to think back to those conversations and then to, to watch the the tiny house evolve the itinerary evolve I know you put a, a map draw a hand-drawn map out there at some point of the places you were going and I shared that on our page but it's uh, it's great to see how little seeds become 
really, really big idea. So we're, we're, we're thankful that you've taken a pause here from your preparations to spend some time with us. Uh, you'll have a lot of um, very interested followers here in uh, the Newton County area. And we really look forward to seeing you next uh, spring, May, May timeframe, whenever that may be. And, and we'll be watching until then and uh, sending you encouragement along the way. We wish you all the best. Oh, thank and, uh, you. It's a, it's a great thing you're doing. Uh, real quick before we wrap up, I just for the folks on here, I wanted to, um, before we say goodbye for today, Eric, I wanted to share, um, you know, the things we have on our calendar because, you know, these virtual events are the way that we're trying to keep the conversation going. So we've got the panel discussion for the Sort of plastic next Thursday on our calendar, but what that means is right now you've still got the opportunity to sign up for that on the calendar. You'll get a link to watch that film. Goes in depth about some of the history behind plastic, you know, pollution and, and what it does to our environment, and what things we can do to address it. We've had this conversation this morning, and tomorrow is actually an important day in the in the climate action world. Um, the Climate Reality Project, which is one, as I said, is the original place where I heard about Erica's work, and she she attended their training, as did I and several of our board members. But uh, tomorrow is their annual 24 hours of reality event. So from 4 p.m. Saturday to 4 p.m. Sunday this weekend, there's some there's over a thousand presentations around the world, and we're going to be doing one of those at 4:30 tomorrow. I, um, Dr. Melissa Hayes, and uh, Professor Theodosia Wade from Oxford College. So uh, we really encourage you to join us for that. Again, it's all about conversation. It's about looking at the reality of some of the, like Erica said, the 90% of some things that we've already, you know, suffered loss with, but the fact that we can and will do something about it. So it's, it's meant to be an uplifting moment, the good side of reality, but we hope you'll join us for that. Erica, thank you again for being here. We, um, we're very excited to, uh, to follow your journey and thanks for all you do. Hey, thank you so much and for everybody that tuned in and watched and I'm excited. I've never been to Georgia before, so this will be fun. I'm excited and, and with stories, yeah. Um, if they want to send them to you and you send them to me, but I'm, I, would, I would love to start, I'm starting to collect stories for everywhere that I'm going so that I get kind of an idea of, and like I said, not, no story is too small or too big because all right well we'll come up with some stories and we'll also the folks out there with uh, business interests who would like to help sponsor what eric is doing and help her get here next spring i'm sure she'd be happy to hear from you also so and i can put you in touch so all right well everybody uh have a good day have a good weekend erica good luck with the rest of your preparations and we'll be watching the journey all right all right thanks, thanks. So much. all yeah. right goodbye bye-bye